Hey everyone, it's Joel with Dissecting DIY. We are going to recap the Wave Plus. Uh, the one that I initially bought was not the Wave Plus. I was having some issues uh, with the product and its connectivity. I wasn't getting instant reads and the days were going by and I, I run down in the basement and I was going at about seven days before getting an update. I contacted uh, the company, AirThings, told them I was having an issue. They were fantastic. They actually sent me out the Wave Plus when they heard that I, uh, where I'm monitoring the air quality and why was because I run in the basement. So I wanted to make sure the radon levels were low. And they said, you need to check out our other product, which is the Wave Plus. I asked them why, and they said, well, it's gonna monitor your total uh, volatile organic compounds, and it's going to monitor um, uh, CO2 levels, uh, carbon dioxide. So I said, okay, send it and I'll check it out. I've been checking it out. I love this thing. It's crazy. The It, it is staying up to date, which is what I wanted. Um, and it's only powered by two batteries. Uh, I believe that they use a Duracell Industrial Alkaline. But, um, you know, I would recommend if when you replace them, going with the lithium, um, a, a lithium battery. And, uh, but but moving forward, uh, you can see that my, my radon levels up, you know, in the screen, you can see my radon levels are pretty low, 0.4. Uh, anything uh, 4 and above, you would want to mitigate, which I'm doing. Ours was 4 and above. But anything below that's good, and anything below 1 is uh, it's better than the outdoor. I think 1.7 is the radon exposure in the actual air. Um, going to total VOCs, again, this one uh, it wasn't very high or was within limits. We'll go over the, that in a second. CO2 was within limits. Um, humidity level, anything below 50%, is going to stop mold growth, which is uh, ideal, especially if you're running in a base basement. Um, you know, monitoring your humidity levels in a basement and keeping them in check is always a great idea. Um, outside of that, the you know temperature was, you know, that that's preference if I needed to cool it or heat it. And then um, the pressure is just anything at sea level. Now, moving on, let's go over some of the levels and a distinction between carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. You know, in the world we live in, it, it just has to be said. Um, now, this will monitor the total VOCs. So the total VOCs, anything less than 300 is ideal. It's low. You're going to get no irritation. Three to 500 is acceptable. Occasional irritation. Uh, and then, of course, 500 to, to 1,000 is marginal. Complaints of irritation and discomfort are possible. And then anything beyond that is high irritation, discomfort. It's not deadly, but it's something that you want to monitor, especially if you're doing what I'm doing, and that's running in a basement. Um, now, I do, uh, now, now we get to the CO2 levels. Now, carbon dioxide levels and carbon monoxide levels, the concentrations are extremely different. So per source I use of Kane International, um, for the CO2 levels is 250 uh, to 350 ppm is at normal background concentration. Going to 350 to 1,000 ppm is a typical occupied dwelling. Anything beyond 1,000 to 200, you're gonna get complaints of diz dizziness and there's just gonna be poor air quality. And then, of course, 2,500 headaches, dizziness, poor concentration. And then, of course, it goes all the way up to 40,000 ppm. That, you know, I would, I would really look into. And it's, it's something great to monitor. Now, carbon monoxide has different concentration levels. It is important to point out that this is not a, a CO or carbon monoxide detector. It will not sound. You will need a different device. Very important. So, it, but if you are curious, um, since you've come to the video, maybe you're looking for a carbon monoxide detector, figured you'd get an all-in-one like this. Sorry to say this is not the product for you, but if you are, um, you're wondering about the concentrations, uh, carbon monoxide, anything at 40 ppm, um, 10 hours is, is going to set off that alarm. 50 ppm, 8 hours, 70 ppm. Uh, and this is per a website, Kitty, which I actually have up on the screen here. Um, you know, 150 ppm is going to set off that alarm within 10 to 50 minutes. And then, of course, 400 and above, 4 to 15. Um, 50 ppm, it's saying um, it is for healthy adults, uh, Occupational Safety Health Administration. 200 ppm, you're going to get a slight headache, fatigue, and dizziness. Uh, 400, same thing. Uh, within two hours of exposure, threatening after three, life-threatening after three, 
and then of course um, you know 800 800 and it, it's it's pretty you'll get convulsions within 45 minutes unconscious within two hours death within two to three hours and then 1600 ppm headache dizziness nausea within 20 minutes death within one hour so those are important distinctions um, that is for carbon minoxide um, and then carbon dioxide is a, a very different uh, element that you'll this will be detecting but uh, I just figured I'd I point out those just in case you came here looking for um, that type of detector and are disappointed so um, that being said I highly recommend this product I really appreciate air things for sending this out um, I am able to monitor my um, not just my radon levels but VOCs and carbon uh, dioxide levels and you might want be wondering why would I want to monitor carbon dioxide it is extremely important if you're doing any type of air sealing in your home monitoring that level shows how well your your home is breathing a home needs to breathe and the more air sealing you do it um, you know there's a certain amount that you can do before you do too much and then you have to add a machine that actually brings in fresh air and uh, cycles fresh air um, while people might say what's the point it, it is beneficial um, to air seal uh, and then once you do get to the point in some of these newer homes um, the energy used is still typically less than the energy lost so um, just a quick thing to point out there so those are some of the reasons that you might want to uh, monitor indoor air quality and uh, if you do have any concerns about uh, you know the high levels you can always get a CFM or um, basically a company can come in and do a CFM test or air loss test to see how well the, the home is breathing if it's too low they might uh, you know they'll have some recommendations for you uh, that being said I'm Joel at dissecting DIY uh, recapping the air things wave plus and of course just the wave if uh, you ever need any um, you want an air quality test that's all you got to do if you're standing in front of it and then if you want to look on your phone the only drawbacks or cons to this product is that you will need um, to be within 30 feet or Bluetooth range I am hoping down the road um, there will be some powered options where you know you can power it and they can attach to Wi-Fi I don't know if they're gonna you know do something like Nest does where there's the six lithium batteries and it's able to connect to Wi-Fi somehow or a powered option where it's plugged into um, power. But anyways, um, that is the Wave Plus. You have a good day.